Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Beating Bad Bots by Knowing Good Users. My name is Mania Den, and I'll be your moderator. A few housekeeping items to cover about this presentation. First, today's webinar will be available on demand after the live session, and a copy of the recording will be sent to you via email. If at any time you have a question for our speakers, please feel free to send it through the questions box in your control panel. We'll be answering these questions at the end of the presentation. For today's presentation, our speakers will be Heather Holland and Sebastian Wallen. Heather is Vice President of Marketing here at Castle. With more than two decades of cybersecurity, mobile, and networking experience, she leads the go-to-market strategy and brand awareness for the company. Joining Heather is Sebastian Wallen, CTO and co-founder of Castle. Sebastian was formerly a security engineer at Sony and co-founded a startup in payments and digital trust prior to his time here at Castle. Now, without further ado, I will turn the time over to Heather. Heather? Great, thank you, Mania, and thank you to everyone who has joined us today. We know your time is extremely valuable, so we'll be keeping this presentation to about 30 minutes today. Before we dive into the presentation, I'd like to just quickly set the stage for what we'll be talking about in today's webinar. So first, we'll start off by talking about how bot attacks have been evolving over the years. We'll then go through the bot attack kill chain and why traditional bot detection struggles with more sophisticated attacks. We'll then introduce a new approach to detection that's identity aware, and then we'll wrap it up with Sebastian, who will present a live bot attack demonstration and discuss how this approach can yield lower false positives and a better customer experience. So let's kick this off by jumping into a quick history of bot attacks. So let's look at first generation. These bots were very simple. They were basic scripting tools. They didn't have the ability to store cookies or even execute JavaScript. Essentially, they didn't have the ability to perform like a real browser would. Their primary function was to do brute force attacks or scrape content, making their attacks extremely easy to spot. And because they don't possess the capabilities of a real web browser, they have no context. So they're the easiest to detect since they, they can't maintain cookies. And then we move on to second generation bots. And second generation bots use session cookies. However, they're not able to execute JavaScript and their primary function, similar to the first generation bots, are to do brute force and content scraping. The primary goal of second generation bots is to parse through HTML much like a web crawler would. And then that brings us to our third generation of bots. These bots operate through website development and testing tools known as headless browsers. And unlike second generation bots, they can maintain cookies and they can execute JavaScript. So these bots were created in response to the JavaScript challenges and websites and applications. Um, so like their predecessors, they're mainly used for brute force DOS attacks or content scraping, but because they possess browser and device data, they can actually look like legitimate browsers. So if one of these bots is performing a low and slow attack, it may be very easy for them to get past an organization's web application firewall. So the best way to detect these types of bots is through device fingerprinting. And that brings us to generation four. And these bots is where we are today. Fourth generation bots are mainly used for things like account takeover and other fraudulent types of attacks. They're really aiming to stimulate basic human-like interactions, such as things like simple mouse movements and keystrokes um, in a way to try to get past your organization's automated attack detection tools. So they've been able to figure out how to breach a user session by mimicking how a user behaves throughout the entire session, not just compromise at login. These are typically called parasite bots and the users are called infected users. These bots are mimicking human behavior on both web and mobile. And because of that, that means that no channel of your digital business is actually safe. So the best way to combat this is by understanding a customer's identity and using user behavior analytics to be able to spot these kinds of attacks. And Sebastian will actually come back to this slide a little bit later in the presentation, where he's going to discuss how this evolution has really necessitated a new approach to bot detection. So um, let's talk a little bit more about these parasite bots and how they attack your business. These attacks are some of the most advanced self-learning bots out there. They're like swarm nets. And these self-learning attacks can 
really greatly decrease the time to breach by leveraging consensus-based social networking where they coordinate between uh, the different bot agents. So just like what they are named after, they collect and distribute resources and workloads. And these swarms can actually collect intelligence, they can accelerate any kind of trial and error, and they can apply the specific attacks to an organization. And by leveraging these specialized bots in their swarm network, they can actually exploit the discovered vulnerability. So as you can see in this attack chain, you can see that the self-learning bot will carefully research their target to understand your users and your systems, and then deliver the remote exploits. Once inside, they'll then move laterally until they've established a large presence, and then they can gather and collect sensitive data, which can then be exfiltrated for financial gain and cause your, your organization some potential damage. So when we look at the types of damage that bots can do, by mimicking real users. There's a lot of different things that, that can happen. So some of these examples are carding, content spam, in-app scraping. However, what I'd like to do is just highlight a couple of the most prevalent and malicious ones. And that would be account takeover and fake account creation. So let's first talk about account takeover. So this is by far one of the most prevalent uh, because it's one of the most lucrative for attackers. So here, an attacker is um, illegally gaining access to a victim's online account. Um, once they gain access to an account, they then have the ability to gain access to things like your funds, uh, maybe buying products, services, or gaining access to other stored value of some kind, which can lead to fraud. And the most common way of accessing these accounts is through automated credential stuffing attacks. So credential stuffing is actually an automated web injection bot attack where hackers use credentials, which could be sourced from, you know, data breaches off of, you know, that can be found off of the uh, credentials can be found off the dark web. And they use that to be able to potentially gain access to victims, other accounts that they may have because they're using the same types of credentials. So then we also have other pretty malicious attacks which is fake account creation. So mm -hmm. while a lot of people might think about, you know, they may have actually personally used fake account creation to anonymously request information from an organization, um, today this has evolved to fake account creation abuse by attackers. And this, is, this can be used to execute kind of a secondary attack such as fraud or theft. So with fake account creation, an attacker runs a script that attempts to create hundreds or even thousands of accounts. Mm -hmm. And a couple of the most common reasons is to see if the account creation actually succeeds or if it fails. And in the account, mm -hmm. if an account creation succeeds, the new account could actually be used for fraudulent purposes and result in monetary losses. Um, but if the account creation fails, that indicates that the account already exists, and therefore the attacker has now validated vulnerable credentials. And that could actually be a precursor to a credential stuffing attack on your login and your users. So to combat these fourth generation attacks, identity related bot attacks, um, a new modern approach is needed. And that is why Castle has introduced in identity aware bot detection. Because bot web activity can be indistinguishable from human web activity, organizations need to understand not only a user's identity, but also understand the same identity across web and mobile platforms. Castle's cross-platform approach can stop potential fraud, such as fake account creations, credit card stuffing, and account takeovers by tying a user to their device and application activity, not just at account creation or login, but also within the application itself. So what's really unique about this approach is that Castle is layering on the context of a user's identity to traditional bot detection risk signals. And while traditional anti-bot uh, solutions are parsing through web traffic and you know they're trying to understand attack tools and traffic origins, Castle is offering higher fidelity detection by actually analyzing identity and user behavior analytics in addition to these traditional risk pattern, patterns. So um, Castle is then able to take this one step further beyond detection and they're able to 
automate response and recovery. So with a dynamic identity risk engine and automated workflows, Castle protects users on any device and safeguards their interactions. So from here, I'm going to pass the presentation over to Sebastian, where he'll dive more into why we built identity-aware bot detection and how a new approach was needed to be able to solve this problem, and then share a demonstration of a live bot attack. So Sebastian, over to you. Thank you, Heather. So I wanted to start with the market challenge that we saw before us in bot detection. So the question on everyone's mind when talking about bot detection is the one of false positives. In the context of bot detection, a false positive is a fancy word for saying that a good user got blocked or challenged when they shouldn't have been. False positives are bad for business. They can hurt conversions because the user will be annoyed and leave. And I'll share some points why knowing the user identity helps reducing the false positives. In this chart, you can see that Castle does not only analyze bot behaviors on a per request level, but has a full understanding of the user's history of activity and devices. For instance, by knowing the user context, Castle can not only determine whether a specific geolocation is suspicious in general, but if it's suspicious for the particular user as well. Similar with language, time zone, or any other properties that are typical for the user. So this can help reduce false positives, especially for in-app actions, such as money transfers or credit card transactions, where you can, for instance, choose to impose friction only if a new device is exhibiting bot-like behavior. So depending on your requirements, these frictions can be anything from an email verification to multi-factor challenge to a COPTA. So in the next slide, I'll be going through some of the bullets. With the new Castle policies, we'll give you the possibility to automate this whole process of additional verifications, where not only individual transactions can be approved, but also the entire device can be trusted for some amount of time, even if the user decides to wipe their cookies. In addition to collecting identity information, Castle also collects and analyzes interaction data from the browser, such as patterns from the user's mouse and keyboard interactions, to determine whether it looks like a human or not. And because Castle has this complete picture of the user, we can also determine if the whole account looks like it's showing bot-like behavior by looking at repetitive event sequences or excessive usage of any kind. So before I show you the demo of how to set up and use the Castle bot detection, let's recap the different types of bots that Heather mentioned earlier in the presentation. So first we have the first generation, and those are basically simple scripts like bash scripts or something you write with your favorite programming language. And these tools have no inherent understanding of the content of the web application and are pretty much just HTTP request helpers. And the second generation, the web scrapers, they understand HTML and can extract information from this data. But a limitation with these is that they do not execute JavaScript on the site. So this makes them very limited in usage to any modern website. The third generation is the more advanced and uh, capable of also rendering HTML, running JavaScript and managing cookies as well. And one, of, one example of this is the very popular Phantom JS, the first generation of headless browser. But in comparison to normal web browsers, these have limited runtime and are often detectable through different fingerprinting techniques. So finally, the fourth generation. And these are browsers that are run in headless mode, that is without any visible window and typically in a server environment. An example of this would be headless Chrome that was launched in 2017. Now, these browsers are automated by tools like Selenium or Puppeteer, to mention a few. And they are very popular to use, for instance, in automated testing, but can also be used with more malicious intent. The thing with these bots are that they are indistinguishable from normal web browsers because they are, in fact, normal web browsers, only controlled by automated software. The only way to distinguish these bots from legitimate users is to look at the intent and the interactions and to take the user's prior history into account, the identity footprint, if you will. So next I'll be showing you a demo of a fourth generation bot 
used in a credit card transaction scenario, where the purpose of this fictive attack is to use the website to figure out if a list of stolen credit cards are still working. So this here is an example SaaS web application that I created for the purpose of this demo. It's not a real site, but I'm using Castle under the hood to verify if the transaction is bot-like and take the appropriate action. So how I've accomplished this is by using Castle's new bot policies and bot detection. So from within the Castle dashboard, I've created this policy to deny transactions with a high bot risk score. And I could have set up the policy to actually block the request at a registration as well, but I decided to impose any friction later in the app on the sensitive event. And this is to allow for a smoother sign-up experience. The key here is that Castle will detect bot-like behavior already at registration, but thanks to the identity and device awareness, I can choose to challenge or deny an action at any point in the app. And from the Castle dashboard, it's also easy to see which users and devices that were matched by my new policy by checking out the threats view on top here. And also, as we can see here, I've set up policies for account takeover scenarios where I will deny the most malicious logins and challenge the most suspicious ones. So back to the SaaS application. At first, I'll be going through the transaction flow manually as a human to demonstrate how the app behaves in a normal situation. So I'll start with pressing the sign up button. I'll enter my email and a password and press the registration button. And on this page, I'm asked to enter my credit card information to complete the transaction or the registration. So after I enter my numbers, I press pay. And there we go. The transaction was completed and the account is ready. Next, I'll be running a headless browser, but to make the demo more, more interesting, I'll show the browser window to let you know what's going on while we run the scenario. I've automated all the same steps I did as a human and decided to simulate mouse movements, as you can see here. And now at the end of the scenario, we can see that the bot was detected and that the transaction was blocked. It's really up to you to decide how you wanna handle the scenario when a risky transaction is detected, but other options outside of blocking might include to instead challenge the user with a CAPTCHA or ask for additional verification through phone or email, or perhaps even let the bot believe that the transaction was successful. And once these transactions are, or once these verifications are completed, the user is allowed to proceed with the transaction. So in a real scenario, it's very likely that the bot will interact much faster with the website as it is in the interest of the attacker to test if the list of credit cards um, are still working as quickly as possible. But this gives you the idea of how these types of attacks can be automated and mitigated with the new castle policies and bot detection. So let's go back to the slides. So we just saw an example of how an attack can be made using an automated browser. As we look into the future, it will be increasingly hard to catch up with the sophistication of bots since the, they mimic human behavior, both on real browsers and both on, on mobile or on real mobile devices. Trying to reduce the number of false positives when you detect bots is difficult enough. But how do you automate rem remediation workflows when there's an actual attack happening? The typical challenge to present to a user is a CAPTCHA. But as a defense, those are becoming weaker as the tools are getting more advanced. So for instance, there are account checker tools out there used for account takeover attacks available with built-in CAPTCHA solvers. I believe that organizations need to move away from traditional bot detection that just looks at perimeter traffic as they do not have any awareness of the user and its devices and can only offer simple types of remediation flows like CAPTCHAs. Your security operations team are already overworked and adding more security forensics and manual investigation on their plate is not the answer. You need to look for solutions that can automate a full recovery and remediation workflow. 
And at the same time, product teams are concerned with conversation loss when stepping up security and bothering the user with different types of friction. We believe that having the full context of a user is the future of bot detection. We also believe that understanding the user's identity is necessary to offer an efficient remediation and recovery flow. And that's what organizations need to focus on. Focus on the user's identity and use that information to build custom workflows for incident remediation. That's the only way we can stay ahead of the curve while keeping the users happy. And with that, I'm gonna hand it back to Mania. Great, thank you so much, Sebastian. We will go ahead and take some of the questions that were asked during this webinar. So the first question that we have is, does Castle work in cloud only, or can it function in a hybrid on-prem or a full air gap? That's a good question. Castle is currently cloud only. Great. So uh, we also have another question. That is, uh, what is weighted more in the bot score? Is it the behavioral analytics, or is it the automation tools? So the bot score is uh, designed to catch any form of automation, regardless of which generation of bots we're dealing with. So if it's simple automation tools or headless browsers, it kind of doesn't really matter as they're both automated. We analyze behavior both by looking at, uh, you know, in repetitive event sequences and the more high def keyboard and mouse movements uh, when it's available. So I think they're equal. Um, it's both very clear signs of automation. Great. So we had another question come in during the webinar, which is how prevalent are Gen 4 bots compared to older generation bots and attacks on the market? Right. So attackers are trying to run their attacks as cheaply as possible. So there are definitely more simple bots um, out there and they're still very common, especially since many sites don't have good defenses. Um, I mean, the attacks aren't more sophisticated that, that they need to be really. So it also kind of depends on the use case In scenarios where speed is important, like trying millions of stolen credentials from a list, simpler bots are more, more common since they are cheaper to run. And, you know, if it works to run a cheap, simple bot, then the attackers will keep doing that. So I'll say, say that the, the simple bots are still uh, very prevalent. Fantastic, Sebastian. Thank you so much for answering these questions. So that's all the time we had for today. Uh, thank you, everyone, for attending today's webinar, Beating Bad Bots by Knowing Good Users. I appreciate that you took time out of your day to spend it with us here at Castle. If you'd like to learn more about Castle and how we protect customer identities, please visit us at www.castle.io. Have a wonderful Wednesday and hope to see you again at another Castle webinar. Goodbye.